Hello, this is Faith of Faith and Books, and I'm at the beach house uh, right now. The, you can see this window over here. The ocean is right out that way, um, and we're having a lovely time. Um, and I just finished reading a book. This is the second book this week I finished, and this is just a children's book, The Borrowers by Mary Norton. This was a book that I read when I was young, I don't know, 10 or 11. I remember loving it. I know I read, there's a bunch of them, I know I read Borrowers um, A Field, and I'm pretty sure I read Borrowers A Float, and I can remember the cover of Borrowers A Loft, so maybe I read that. I do not remember Borrowers Revenge. Anyway, those are all the, the uh, series. But this is an utterly charming story. I really, uh, really, really uh, liked it and admired the writing in it. Um, it's about these um, these little people and the illustrations, they kind of look, at least the uh, pod, the dad, the father looks kind of leprechaun-ish to me. Uh, so there's this little family of these little people called the borrowers and they live in this great house in England. It's very Edwardian in feel. In fact, a lot of the, they live by borrowing lots of little, um, you know, bits and pieces of human things like uh, hat pins and things that go missing, you know, that you can't find, thimbles. And um, they go and they get all these little things and they make this cozy little home under the kitchen, um, in the basement, you know, in the, below the house in the kitchen. And for instance, Arietti, I always called her, when I read this to myself, it was Arity, but it's Arietti. Um, her, her room is made out of a cigar box. A lot of the items are very archaic, you know, because they're from Edwardian times, um, Edwardian times. And um, to me, that made it fascinating. All these sort of obscure things, sealing wax and uh, mustard pots and just all sorts of, there's even more obscure things than that, um, which I found really fascinating. It's kind of like, do you ever see those books, um, the I Spy books, where they're photographs and they take all these things, like maybe crackers, but they make the crackers or the walls of a room and, you know, they, they decorate everything with um, like little types of food, but it looks like some other scene. Um, it, it, it gives me the same feel that I find that really charming and cozy about it. Um, and kind of educational too, because a lot of times there's stuff that you're not quite sure what they used it for. Um, you sort of have to, you know, use your context clues. But anyway, it's a really charming story about this family and they're trying not to be seen because if they're seen by human beings, not beings, but beings, um, then they have to emigrate. They have to leave the house because um, uh, they get cat. The humans will get cats or, or exterminators or whatever to get rid of these little people, and so um, it's it's all about um, a boy comes to stay at the house, and it's all about his interaction with them and. Uh, it's just really, really charming, and I love the characterization. Nobody's, um, you know, it's not a, a didactic story. Everyone's very much has certain personality traits, some good, some bad. Um, and it kind of takes surprising twists and turns. Uh, I really, I really enjoyed it. I really admired the writing. Um, just some beautiful sentences in here. So apparently it won the Carnegie Medal. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of a classic. You, you might very well have heard of it. And what uh, spurred me to read it was that um, back home, uh, a local theater was having a, uh, a summer festival of the Studio Ghibli, Ghibli, Ghibli movies. And uh, one of them was The Secret Life, or was it The Secret Tale of uh, Arietti. And I went to see it with the little six-year-old. We did not, we, I started to read it to him and he was initially into it, but then he got COVID. And so he wound up not, you know, we didn't snuggle on the couch while he had COVID, even though we couldn't really quarantine. You know, we were trying to do a little bit of distancing. We couldn't do much. So he mostly would um, lie on the couch in the basement and watch movies. Or when he came upstairs, he, my husband spoils him 
and he was since he was sick he gave him a new um oh, what do you call those things drones so he was playing with the drone in the living room um a lot or he would he wasn't feeling sick enough that he couldn't go outside on the swing or just sort of ramble around the uh, yard sometimes so that's what he mostly did and we didn't really read um and so then we kind of lost you know life took over and we we never got back to the book but we did he was well enough he had tested uh, negative and he was feeling much better all he he it was really just like a mild cold for him so we wore our mask and we went to the movie theater and we did see the movie and it was quite charming too but it's different it has some of the elements in it of course but they do change it quite a bit uh, still it was good I, I thought it was a good adaptation um, I think it'd be interesting to really sit and um, watch it again and and compare it with the original story um, the, the poor six-year-old though he does not do movies well he wants to get up and move around and it was so air-conditioned it was a chilly day and they had the air conditioner just cranked up we were freezing the whole time and he kept wanting to go home and I said no we got to watch the whole movie so so it was a bit distracting um, and I don't think I um, concentrated on the movie as much as I could have. So I would like to see it again because I did really enjoy it. But anyway, I just want to recommend The Borrowers. I found it utterly charming, uh, a lovely read, and um, just interesting on so many different levels. So, so that's that. Um, tomorrow is the first day of July, and I preloaded um, all my sustainability July videos because I knew I was going to be away on vacation and I knew that I had a lot of other stuff going on in July so I knew I just wouldn't be able to do it in real time so I will try to read or you know comment but put up videos about my own reading during sustainability July um, but I've already preloaded a lot of them and a lot of them I meant to go back and like put in the um, description notes links to books and that sort of thing and I have not done that to the extent that I wanted to. I started to do it here and there. So, but it is what it is, and I'll try to fix it as the month goes along as I am able. But it's gonna be, July is gonna be a crazy month. So I don't know what I'm actually gonna be able to do. Anyway, and now, since I'm in the mood for children's books, since I got this one, so this is the Burgess Seashore book for children, which I also bought for the six-year-old, but, um, because he loves the, uh, you know, Peter Rabbit and um, Chatterer, the Red Squirrel, and I forget. We, we've read a ton of these Thornton W. Burgess books, animal books. But this type, like his bird book, it contains a lot more, uh, you know, like uh, naturalist information. Um, a lot more uh, detail and kind of science in it. And it's a little bit above his grade level, really. He likes the stories, the, the cute narratives, but um, this is a lot more just actual uh, biology. So, but I started, <laughs> I started reading it and um, I'm finding it really charming. So I'm gonna read this while I'm at the beach. Um, and this will sort of fit one of the sustainability um, prompts because I love being by the sea and this is about being by the sea. So, um, and that was one of the prompts like, uh, a place that you really enjoy or love um, on earth and being by the ocean is one of mine so all right I'm gonna end there I uh, hope you're doing well and happy reading bye-bye <laughs>